It is the dawn of a new day on Better Call Saul. They are switching gears and crossing tracks with the Breaking Bad timeline. And it won't be long before we meet with Walter White once again. When I first saw this scene with Kim and Jimmy working Shirley over, I thought these two are masters at getting what they want from other people. However, by the end of the episode, I realized that they're really not and that the master of getting what he wants from other people is Lalo. All of this was shown to us through the theme of the episode, switching gears. We've seen Werner and the boys in this place for quite a few episodes, and it's always been presented to us as a place for them to relax, a positive place, a way for Mike and Gus to take care of the workers. But in this episode, that really changed. The way this place was presented to us was it's like they're in a prison. They are watching everything that these guys do. Mike and his men are truly invading the privacy of these German workers. And this is really accented when the guy is listening in on Werner's phone call and sharing all the details with everybody in the trailer. We saw things really switching gears. Hey, I'm G, and this is the G-Spot. Jimmy and Kim both lack presence in the moment. For Jimmy, this plays out with him being oblivious to his environment. Jimmy can't read a room. When Jimmy walks into a room, the only thing he can read from it is what he has already rehearsed for it. We can see this best in the hearing that Jimmy had. He answers the questions that he rehearsed for quite well. But when it comes to Chuck, Jimmy can't say anything. He can't even read that these people want to hear about Chuck. And finally, at the end, he can't see how foolish he sounds when he says that he was influenced by the land crabs. We've seen in previous episodes that Jimmy does not know how to read a room. We saw it when he was at Kim's party just a couple episodes ago. We also see it when Jimmy tries to sell phones on the street. When he walks into this pretty seedy environment, he doesn't read it. Jimmy never takes the time to realize that his money is in danger while he's selling the phones on the street. When Jimmy walks into a room, only thing he knows is what he has rehearsed for. Jimmy is never present in the moment. Because Jimmy is not present in the moment, it is difficult for him to see what's coming. Kim finds it hard to be in the present moment because Kim is always being distracted. She's distracted on her phone call at work with Jimmy's coffee cup. Kim has started a smoking habit again, which is a constant distraction. And in the end, we see Kim is drinking alone, which is the ultimate distraction from everything in life. And if we look back at season four, we see Kim has spent the entire season jumping from one thing to the next, continually trying to distract herself. But because Kim is always distracted, she can't see what's coming. Jimmy and Kim's flaws are both accented in their characters in the opening scene. We see Lizzie switch gears several times in this scene because of the consequences of her being distracted. Phil is hesitant to switch gears because he is completely oblivious to his environment and what is going on around him. These two traits allow them to pull one over on Shirley. But these are also the two traits that will keep Jimmy and Kim from truly succeeding at getting what they want from other people. The Newlywood Game is all about knowing what is on your partner's mind. If you want to know what's on someone's mind, you need to be present in the moment when you are with them. If Jimmy was present at his hearing, if he was present in that moment, he would have known that the board was looking for him to mention Chuck's name. Neither Jimmy nor Kim are truly present in the moment, but Lalo is. We first see this when Lalo enters the nursing home. He is shocked at what he sees. It's not what he prepared for, but Lalo takes a deep breath and switches gears. Because Lalo is present in the moment, he is able to know the mind of others. And because Lalo knows what is on the mind of others, Lalo is able to give others what they need when they need it. This is very much so epitomized with Hector. Lalo gives Hector three things that Hector needs. The first thing that Lalo can see Hector needs is a reminder of the past. And for someone to look at Hector in the way that he used to be, not in the way he is now. So Lalo shares stories with Hector from Hector's past, from Hector's glory days. So Hector can feel like he once did. The other thing we see Lalo give Hector is his bell, which Hector desperately needs. Lalo gave 
Hector a voice and it helps reinforce that Lalo knows what people need when they need it. The third thing that Lalo gives Hector is something we all need, and that is honesty. Before Lalo gives Hector the bell, he tells him the complete story of where the bell comes from. When you are honest to others, it leads to bonding, and it allows you to know their mind better. When you are dishonest or keep secrets from people, it leads to space and prevents you from knowing their mind better. Lalo gives everybody he interacts with what they need. We can see it with Nacho. Nacho has not been eating, and Lalo is constantly trying to give him food. And we also see that not only is Lalo trying to give Nacho food, but Lalo is being honest with Nacho. Why is Lalo so interested in giving people what they need when they need it? Because Lalo knows about the law of retaliation. We know this law best as an eye for an eye, but this law works both ways. If you give somebody what they need when they need it, they will give you whatever you want in return, and they'll do it without even thinking about it. If we compare Lalo visiting Gus unexpectedly to Hector visiting Gus unexpectedly, we can see how Lalo always gives people what they need when they need it. When Hector went to visit Gus, he was smoking behind the counter. But when Lalo goes, we see he is a satisfied customer. Lalo is very in tune with the environment he's in. And he's also giving Gus what he needs when he needs it. Because Gus plays the role of a professional in the community. When somebody like Hector shows up in the restaurant, this puts Gus's lie at risk. Lalo did nothing to put Gus's lie at risk. He did everything that Gus needed to continue living his double life. Lalo is able to get the upper hand on Gus for a couple of reasons. One of them being because Gus suffers from distraction like Kim. It's kind of surprising to hear about Gus. We don't think of him as being a person that's distracted. But Gus voluntarily distracts himself. Gus uses Los Polos as a cover for being a meth dealer. But in order for him to use this cover, he has to run Los Polos. We see that's what he's doing when Lalo shows up and surprises him. Perhaps if Gus was not distracted with the work of Los Polos, he could see what's coming from Lalo, like Lalo can see what's coming from Gus. The reason why Lalo can use the law of retaliation so much better than everybody else is because Lalo has control of his gears. Lalo can switch gears at will. And Lalo does not lose control of his gears. And the one thing that you need to get whatever you want from other people is self-control. We see that both Jimmy and Kim lack self-control. Kim cannot control herself from being distracted. And Jimmy cannot control himself when things don't go the way he rehearsed them to. We see the ultimate consequence of not having self-control when we see Jimmy and Kim blow up in their fight at the end. Now, when we talk about self-control, you may be thinking, well, hey, Mike and Gus certainly have self-control. And they do to an extent. We rarely see Mike and Gus lose control of themselves. But the thing about Mike and Gus is they really only operate in one gear. They can prevent themselves from switching gears involuntarily, unlike Jimmy and Kim, who do switch gears involuntarily. But what Mike and Gus can't do is switch gears. They only have one gear to operate in. When we see the boys celebrating and they want Mike to have a beer, we see Kai tell Mike, you can't always be in work mode. And it's difficult for Mike to get out of work mode and actually have a beer with the guys. And even though Kai manages to do it by giving Mike what he needs, notice this is the first time we ever see Kai act submissive to Mike, but he gives Gives Mike what he needs because he wants Mike to have a beer. And Kai does manage to get Mike to have a beer, but it's only for a second. Now Gus actually does move through two different gears. His Los Polos gear and his meth dealer gear. When Gus is at Los Polos, he is always pleasant, smiling, and trying to help you. When Gus is a meth dealer, he is always very straight-faced, tight-lipped, and trying to help 
himself. If we go back to the meeting with Gus and Lalo, we can see Gus is literally trapped between these two gears that he operates in. And he doesn't know what to do because Lalo is confronting him about meth business while he was being distracted by Los Polos. If you listen to Gus's answers, the things he says to Lalo during this meeting, it sounds like Gus is talking to a customer. He keeps smiling and giving these like PC customer service sort of answers. It's actually kind of really funny. This is another reason Lalo is able to get the upper hand on Gus because Gus cannot switch through gears. Lalo is a master of his gears. This is what allows Lalo to be present, which allows Lalo to know other people's minds, which allows Lalo to see what's coming, which allows Lalo to give people what they need when they need it. So they'll give him what he needs to prepare for what's coming. Lalo is a true threat to everybody. So you know who has one of their gears really out of whack? Werner. Let's look at Werner, the opening, the closing, and the theme and see what we can come up with. Werner shares the same first name with Werner Heisenberg, the physicist that Walter White took his name from, Heisenberg. If we look closer at Werner, we see that he actually has quite a few things in common with Walt. They're both very methodical in process. They both very much love and respect the work that they do. And they're both pretty clever, which was reinforced to us in this episode when Werner manages to escape Mike's prison. Mike let Werner know that his life could be in danger. Now, Walt also was put in the position of being threatened by Gus. And we see that Walt and Werner react in two extremely opposite different ways. When Walt felt threatened, he went after Gus. But when Werner feels threatened, he runs away from Gus. As we said, Werner and Walt both have the same type of worth at work ethic, but the results of their work are very different. Werner is always building things. He's building the lab and he also builds people up. If you notice, Werner is always building Kai up. He's always defending Kai to Mike and trying to tell Mike that Kai is a good guy. And Werner is always telling Mike what a great job he's done. Werner builds things and builds people up. Walter White, on the other hand, destroys everybody. Walt, if he doesn't outright destroy you, he's constantly trying to knock you down, like he did with Jesse. Walt also destroys the lab. Werner built the lab, and Walt destroys it. Okay, so now we're going to put all this stuff together. The theme of the episode was shifting gears. What we saw through the theme of this episode is that when you have control of your gears, you can see what's coming. Now we can take this theme of switching gears and apply it right to the show. If we look at the opening and the closing, they were saying something to us. In the opening, it's like two seconds in and we can see what's coming. We can see that Kim is trying to pull a con. I mean, why else is she hobbling on crutches like that, right? So in the opening, we can see what's coming, but in the end, Mike says, we can't see what's coming. So the question is, can we see what's coming? My answer is yes and no, because there's two things coming and we can definitely see one, but I'm not sure if we can see the second thing. The first thing that's coming that we should be able to see is Walter White. And this is how we can see that Walt's coming. One, Werner has run away. Two, Werner is looking at this rock very closely. Actually, him and Kai look at the rock closely. So if we look at this rock, we see that it has the title of the episode. Now, if we translate the German word Wiedersehen, it means meet again. These two graffiti looking things are very similar to each other. They're kind of written in the same style and they're both German. So if we read them together, it means meet again Heisenberg. We are going to meet Walter White again. We also saw in this episode, Hector got his bell. So we now see Hector the way we saw him in Breaking Bad. Also, while Hector was getting his bell, we saw that it is the dawn of a new day. Better Call Saul is crossing tracks with the Breaking Bad timeline. That's what I believe they knew we would be able to see coming. What is it that we can't see coming? Well, I'm not exactly sure about this, but I'm pretty positive it has to do with Lalo and Kim. The difference between Jimmy and Lalo is Lalo, one, does things with honesty, and two, Lalo is 
always up. I've never not seen Lalo with a smile on his face. This guy is like, he's pretty amazing, Lalo. I, I love Lalo. He's awesome. Who would not want to be around Lalo? I don't know, but Lalo is always up. And as Kim reminded us, Jimmy is always down. Kim said to Jimmy, you are always down. Kim needs somebody who's up, and that's Lalo. The reason why I think this is so significant, the up and down thing, is not only did we hear Kim tell Jimmy that he's always down, but uh, we see Kim and Jimmy meet in, in a familiar place during this argument. They meet in a parking garage, but it's different. Usually, they met down on the bottom floor of the parking garage, and usually, Kim shared her cigarette with Jimmy. But this time, Kim goes up to the top of the parking garage. Kim doesn't want to be down anymore. She wants to be up. And Kim finishes her cigarette before Jimmy gets there. So, yeah, I really think this is not provable. They didn't give us enough to prove it. But I really think that Kim and Lalo are going to be an item. It's hard to say how much of this we're actually going to see in this season's finale. We may have to wait next season for some of it. To make sure that you know everything they do tell us in the season finale, go ahead, subscribe, and ding the bell so that you will be alerted when I upload my analysis of it. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.